Hey everyone, Cycreyasin here, and in this lesson I'm going to teach you about smart objects, what they are and how to use them. So this is something that my friend Alex Negrea showed me, and I just think it's amazing, and I'll, hopefully if you don't know what it is, then after this you'll agree with me that, yeah, it's pretty cool. So here what I have is I just made like a can. All right, cool. We have a can. And I'm just going to lock the transparency and I'm going to apply a gradient so that this looks a bit more three-dimensional. And I'm going to merge this down. So, okay, now we have this can. Cool. Great. But it's just a regular layer. So we want to make this smart, smarter. So the way you do that is when you have a layer, if you right click on it and, you know, don't right click on the image, but right and just right click on this area where the name is and go to convert to smart object. And what's going to happen is that you'll notice in the little thumbnail icon, you get another icon appearing in the bottom corner. Now that means that this is a smart object. So what's so smart about it? Well, if I double click on that little new icon that appeared, double click on it, I'm going to get this pop up that says after editing, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. So now when I double click on it, I'm in this new document and you'll notice that it's a PSB file and it's labeled the same as uh, the layer, the name of the layer. Um, but it's a PSB file, whereas a Photoshop file is a PSD file, right? So anyway, so now these look the same, right? It's just this layer here. So let's, let's change something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the transparency here. And I'm just going to maybe change the color of this. Um, yeah, so I don't even need to lock that. I'll just go into hue and saturation. And I'm going to colorize this, make it a red can. Sure, why not? Make it red and OK. And click back here. Nothing's changed. Still gray. OK. So now we have our red can. And if I want this to become red, all I have to do is while in this PSB document, I just go File, Save. And that's going to update it. And now, ooh, we have a red can here. So, so far, this isn't really magical or impressive because it's like, well, it's just like isolating a layer. That's no big deal, right? Well, let's do some more things. All right. So, let's say I'm going to make this a can of cola. Oh, cool. There's a cola font, and I didn't even care. Okay, let's make it a can of cola. All right, so now I'm going to go File, Save. And, ooh, we have an updated can of cola. Oh, oh, <laughs> you didn't spell cola right. Well, let's pretend I didn't even notice that I didn't spell cola right. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to warp this. Wah. So let's just assume this is great and it looks awesome and this is what I wanted to do because that's great, right? Okay, I warped it. Now, in a normal layer, let's say I wanted to fix that mistake, the cola thing. Well, I'm pretty screwed. I can't, if I make a new text tool and I write cola, it's just going to appear, you know, it's going to appear there, but it's not going to be warped and it, I want it to fit this. So then, I would have to undo all of this and then merge this down and then warp it again. But I think you know what's coming. I don't have to do that. I just go back to this layer and notice how this is not warped. Just this got warped. Go into here because this, whatever I do to this is going to change here. But what I do here doesn't necessarily change this. Um, so I'll go here and I'll correct it. So it's colon now. Okay, file, save. And now, whoa, it's updated. And it's cola. And it's warped. So pretty much whatever I do here can still be edited. So it's all non-destructive. 
Now let's do another thing. I'm going to duplicate this. So now I have two. And I'm going to rasterize this. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop it from being smart. It's going to make it a stupid layer. Brr, you're stupid now. All right, so now it's stupid. And <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform both of these and make them smaller so I can fit them both on the page. So now we have both of those. And let's see if I can do this again. I'm going to shrink them way down. That's that's pretty tiny. Let's see if we can see them. There they are. There's the colas. There they are, all shrunken down. So now we have one super tiny smart object and one super tiny dumb object or regular. Maybe I didn't want to do that. Let me let me select these again and expand them. Whoa, what just happened? Well, what happened is the stupid object, <laughs> I shouldn't be calling it that, the regular layer, it got all fuzzy because when you shrink something, it makes it small, but it kind of uh, compresses all those pixels, right? And then now you get a blurry image, but the smart object because it's non-destructive, it remembers. It remembers what the original looks like. So when you expand it or shrink it, it doesn't change. Like it still remembers. When I'm big, I look like this. When I'm small, I look like that. Whereas this other non-smart object, it doesn't know that. It's just, well, okay, if you shrink me, you're changing me. And then if you expand me, well, you're just expanding that changed version. So anyway, um, that's it about smart objects. I hope you give it a try. It's really quite cool. Um, can do tons of stuff with it. And again, I have to thank uh, Alex Negrea for for uh, letting me know about them. Um, and yeah, hope this helped. And thanks for watching.